welcome back everybody. Today we're going over the Catamount Fury 2. This shotgun here is imported by Century and made in China. Now I know some of you guys just got a little bit turned off by that and that's fine but keep in mind China certainly has a history of making very good firearms although they may not make the best electronics out there. Uh, certainly like the Norenko Mac 90 and several other uh, guns that they've produced over the years have been fantastic and very highly regarded. So uh, this sucker here is a rotary bolt uh, piston driven magazine fed shotgun so sort of it's going to remind a lot of folks of the Sega 12s however we know Sega 12s are not um, imported anymore in America so this sucker is trying to fill the void I think these started coming in in 2013 so they've been around for a little bit and uh, what we're going to do today is take a look at some of the details of it and then uh, get into what we found overall. Starting at the front end of the gun, it does come pre-threaded for chokes and also comes with three different chokes, full, modified, and cylinder bore. The gas block is railed on the bottom for both the Fury 1 and Fury 2, so you can add accessories on there should you choose to do so, lights, lasers, whatever the case may be. It's standard 1913 style spec, so you can just, uh, really any accessories out there that'll fit the 1913 style rail will work on there just fine. The gas system has two settings, the number one for high powered stuff like uh, buckshot slugs, and the number two for the lighter powered stuff, the practice stuff, etc. Uh, it's pretty easily adjusted. You can just push down this detent with any sort of flat tool, a butter knife will work. We got the Leatherman here sitting by me, so you're just going to rotate it and uh, clicks right into place for the next setting. The polymer handguards look like pretty typical AK stuff, and they are, however, they are a unique pattern, so you can't just replace it with any other AKM furniture out there. They're unique to the Fury shotguns. The gun ships with one 10 round mag and two 5 round mags. Now the Fury 2 has this polymer magwell here, whereas the Fury 1 has a standard AK magwell where you sort of rock and lock your mags in. So it works similar to your AR-15 where you're just going to insert your magazines until you hear the click and then you know it's really seated as it should be. Uh, of note, when it's really humid out, at least in my experience on this particular gun, it's been relatively difficult to insert those mags, so it takes a good slap on the bottom of it to really get it to seat. When it's not humid, it hasn't been an issue. Again, that could be a sample size of one. I don't really know, but um, that's what I've found so far. To release it, you're just going to hit this AK style mag release right here on the back, and uh, your mag will come out. Now, there's also a bolt hold open feature. And one thing I want to tell you up front is when you're using those birdshot loads, it doesn't always hold back. But with buck and slugs, it tends to hold back just fine. Uh, but if it doesn't hold back, you can activate it just by pushing up on this and uh, running the action. Just like that. To release it, it also has this handy uh, bolt release here, which is really convenient. When you uh, save for a right hand shooter, you're going to put your mag in with your left hand. You can just come up right here with your finger, release that bolt, and get back to firing. Operating the safety is standard AK, so nothing too fancy there. One thing I will point out is that due to the fact that the pistol grip is back here, whereas on a typical AK, it'd be somewhere in this uh, range here, it's a little bit longer reach to the safety, so you really do have to sort of take your hand off, sweep it down, and come back to the pistol grip. So it's just something that takes a little bit of getting used to, even for folks who are really uh, familiar with the AK. Now, these guns have only been coming in since 2013, unlike the Segas or the Veppers, where there's a ton of aftermarket parts available for it. I've started to see kits where you can convert these over for standard AKM furniture, at least on the back here. So you can move the trigger guard up and you can put a pistol grip on here and a regular AKM stock. Again, those kits are just starting to come out. I'm sure if you're watching this in 2017, they're everywhere, but as of right now, they're pretty new. So it is possible to move that trigger forward and run the standard AKM furniture in the back. However, it is not going to come like that from the factory. Uh, additionally, here on the stock, we'll cover that. It has a nice uh, little cheek riser here which does feel good. It's almost like a soft rubber type of material, whereas the rest of it's pretty hard polymer, so it does help you a little bit in the comfort area when firing those full house loads. 
The sights on the gun are very rudimentary, but they're also very quick. They're standard V-notch and post type setup. I believe there's about nine inches in between for this very short sight radius. But again, it is a shotgun, so you really don't need all that much. Um, it is not adjustable as well. So depending on the load you're using, it may be off a little bit. But again, we're talking about shotguns with buckshot loads. Probably not going to notice it. And if it is a problem, moving back, we do have this top 1913 style rail so you can add optics on there. The rail itself is actually made out of polymer, but it's attached to a metal uh, top cover here. And it does hinge. I would say the hinging is pretty solid as is the top cover. Really, if you try to move it up front, there's a very, very small amount of play in it. Even on the back, it's pretty solid and locked down quite well. Disassembly is pretty standard for your AKs. However, this little button right here that's on the back of some AK uh, springs, particularly some Sega rifles out there, can cause a little bit of a problem, if you will. It's not a huge deal. It's just something you have to think about. So you do have to push it down and push your uh, spring forward. And it's very tight, so that's not a bad thing. So I'm just going to use a tool here to push it down. And then we are going to pop our top cover off once we get it all the way forward. And there you go. So you can see that hinge that we just talked about. It's pretty solid again. Even if you try to shake it, there's not a lot of play. There's a little, but not much. And uh, when you open it up, you're gonna, it's going to look very similar to your uh, Seika shotguns. For those of you guys that are familiar with it, or even your Vepers to a point. So that is how it works. You can see the piston up here. We have our rotating bolt that we talked about earlier. And uh, it disassembles pretty much like an AK. Now, the rotating bolt is a little bit more complex. It's not horribly complex, but you do have to make sure you get it in the right position before we disassemble it. But that's really all you see on the inside. While I have it apart, we'll go over the trigger pull. It's actually really good. Uh, it looks pretty similar to a Tapco fire control group if you're looking at it. However, it is not. It is a Chinese made as it's a shotgun fire control group. And I can tell you it's a real light pull. It's right around three pounds. So uh, you got to make sure you got the safety in the right position, but it does pull very smooth. And uh, it's got a little bit of uptake, as you can see here, but the brake is very crisp as well, as is the reset. So certainly can't complain about that. For those of you that have researched these guns at all, one thing you'll note is that there's mixed reports of reliability out there. So I suppose we'll get into that because it sort of is the big thing everybody wants to know with these guns. Uh, one thing I want to say is that make sure for reliability's sake that you have your gas settings on the correct settings. That's first and foremost. Um, if you don't have it on the right setting for your load, load you're probably going to have some problems. So uh, with practice loads, we had mixed results. Certain ones were really bad. Certain ones were really good. The uh, practice loads that I found that ran most well were the federal ones that you see here. They seem to function just fine when set on the uh, number two setting. So they've probably ran 90 to 95% reliable, but again, this is designed to be a defensive gun designed for full power loads. So uh, of those that we ran, we ran, I think, some uh, Remington Sluggers, some uh, Remington number four buckshot, uh, also some uh, Express, or I should say uh, Estate buckshot, double lot and uh, Rio buckshot double lot. It liked the Rio by far and away the best. I don't think we ever had a malfunction with the Rio buckshot. It ate it up without problems and uh, just kept ticking again. That's on the right gas setting with the right load. So well, it's somewhat annoying. Uh, for those of you that have a lot of time behind Sega 12s, you'll probably find similar uh, reports with them. Um, you know, you see Sega 12s and a lot of competitions out there, people running really high round counts to them. But those are really, generally speaking, tuned guns by gunsmiths or folks who know what they're doing uh, to get them to run a specific load. Well, this gun, I'd say, is probably along that as well. So if you got you have to find, I should say, the load that's going to work best in your particular gun on the right setting. Is what it is. Unfortunately, uh, outside of Benelli's and a few other guns out there, there's not a ton of uh, semi auto shotguns, at least in my experience, that are just going to be uh, really, really reliable out of the box with all loads. So you sort of have to just play with it and find what your gun likes. Uh, price point, these suckers are coming to market somewhere between $400 if you catch a good sale, all the way up. I've seen them around $570. So, sort of in that range is where they're going to be. So, certainly reasonably priced guns. And uh, again, I think we covered most of the details. If you have any questions that we didn't cover in this video, by all means, post below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video.
broke the target. 